Hello, how are you? How's it going? How's your life? Today, we're gonna do the book freak out tag thing. To be honest, this is like one of my favorite videos to film just because I love talking about the things I've read, but then I also love talking about the things that I wanna read. I'm very excited, I'm very excited. There are like 10 questions I think or something. I'm sure you've watched these videos before. If you haven't, welcome. <laughs> um, I just wanna say before we get started that this is my first time filming with my new little background and literally, I'm sorry. <laughs> Bitch, I am living and loving, okay? And laughing, <laughs> you know? Like I am, I'm serving. Like literally everyone is, everyone is quaking. Everyone is shaking in their little boots and they should be. Like they should be afraid. Dordaline is coming for your wig. Also, I'm sorry, this hair. <laughs> it's just so difficult being so stunning and gorgeous. Like I literally look like I should just be like in a campus, you know, like studying for something or doing something like that. Like you just caught me on my break. I was just about to get lunch and then, you know, go right back into studying because I'm just a studious little student. Why do I always turn it into like a porn? I need to stop turning everything into like a porn because it sounds like a porn. Anyway, I'm literally stunning. I've literally never looked better. Everyone is quaking and I get it. I get it. Like I would be too, I'd be afraid. They should cast me as the titular character of the secret history TV show whenever they make that thing. I don't know if they're ever gonna make it, but anyway, I should be the main character. Although knowing me and knowing my luck, I would be cast as Bunny. <laughs> But I mean, it's still iconic. It's still iconic. I, I'm okay with being a mooch. I would be gorgeous. Anyway, I'm gonna move on. Let's start answering questions in this mid-year book freak out tag thing, okay? According to my notebook, uh, the first, are you joking? That was so rude. The first question is, what is your favorite book of the year so far? Listen. You know the answer. I know the answer. I mean, this this room knows the, like everyone knows. And that is, of course, Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. And then also I would say Slewfoot by Brom. Everyone on the internet at this point knows. So I'm not gonna talk about it too much. But Slewfoot, I think I've also talked quite ad nauseum about. I've talked a lot about Slewfoot, but let me just quickly reiterate, e reiterate it for you, okay? Slewfoot is a feminist masterpiece. And I was on, I think I was on like a live with Katie recently and we we're talking about Slewfoot and we we're talking about like one. Literally, there was like literally no respect. There was no respect in this world anymore. Are you joking? I'm filming! I'm sorry, men on motorcycles? Sir, it's not 1997 anymore. Anyway. As if it's not like, as if it's not like 10. He's fucking coming back. Are you joking? Men on you, men on motorcycles. I was about to say, <laughs> I was about to say unicycles. What was I talking about? Oh, Slewfoot. Slewfoot is a feminist, demon-filled dream. I loved it so much. I can't recommend it enough to you. Like, you haven't read Slewfoot and you like horror, and like, it's it's your fault at this point. Like, just, just read the book and do it. And don't be like, I can't afford it. There's a library, bitch. There's there's piracy. You could torrent that shit. Like, is that how book piracy works? I don't know. But like, you could, you, you could get it for free. Audible, if you have like a subscription, do it. Especially because the, the audiobook is stunning. It's gorgeous. Also, if you haven't already, check out Ninth House. <laughs> I am Brom and Lee Bardugo's PR person now. <laughs> Question number two. Two. Best sequel. Listen. Listen. <laughs> Why 
we know. We all know this one too. We all know this one too. Mostly because I haven't really read any sequels. I'm currently in the process of reading a sequel, but I wouldn't say that I like it more than what I'm about to say. And that is A Court of Mist and Fury. No shit. No fucking shit. Like, first of all, it's like one of the only sequels I read this year. And second of all, it was amazing. Sarah Jane improved upon her name isn't Jane, improved upon what she had already perfected, which, <laughs> granted, some things were a little bit out of nowhere, out of left field, as they say, in sports. I didn't really care. I was going along for the fantasy. I was going along for the fun. I didn't need logic. I didn't need, I didn't need common sense. No, what I wanted and what I was interested in was the fantasy and Sarah Jane, Sarah Janet, Sarah Jamal came through. God bless. That's the best sequel so far this year and probably gonna be for the whole year. But anyway, number three, a new release you haven't read yet, but it's like out, but you just like haven't read it yet. I have this book, which I heard about a few weeks ago from like my patrons. I haven't really been reading that much fiction from men. I think it'll be interesting to read like a thriller, horror novel written by a man. Cause the last time I tried to do that, other than like Michael McDowell and, and I guess Paul Tremblay and Adam Neville. Okay, so I've read a few, but I'm excited to see what happens. I've heard very mixed things. Some people really love it. Some people really don't fuck with it. Number four is anticipated releases for the rest of the year. Now I wrote down a lot of them. I'm assuming that this sort of questionnaire, this tag is like, give us one answer. And I don't like that. I don't like that at all because I have about 16 answers for every question. So I'm just gonna do however the fuck I wanna do it. I have the things that everyone is excited for. Uh, which is like The Paul Bears Club by Paul Tremblay, How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix, I forgot his name for a second. Black Mouth by Ronald Melfi. Everyone I'm sure is excited for that. I am, I don't know what, I don't know what it's about, but I'm excited. A few books that I haven't really heard that many people talk about, but I am very, very excited for are Mary by Nat Cassidy. This seemingly is about a woman who is maybe possessed. She is your average everyday kind of bitch. She walks around and she's like, I'm an everyday average kind of bitch. And like, that's her life. And she's happy with it, I think. And then one day she like looks in the mirror and she like passes out. She like, <laughs> which is like what happens to me sometimes because of how beautiful I am. She passes out, so she's walking and then she's, oh, and then, gone. I think she starts hearing whispering or something in her apartment or in her head. And soon after all of this happens, the killings begin. And that's what it says on the synopsis. And I am so excited. Seems so good. I think it's possession. It doesn't say. And then of course, Don't Fear the Reaper by Stephen Graham Jones, which I'm sure everyone is anticipating. I probably should have put it in the other section, but whatever. This one I heard about like just before filming called These Fleeting Shadows by Kate Alice Marshall. From what I read, it seems very much like a Knives Out, but horror. Yes. Yes, literally just say Knives Out and I'm in. Like, I love that movie so much. Making it sort of creepy, spooky, <laughs> say no more. And now let's talk about the shits, okay? Question number five is biggest disappointment. I have two answers for this. One of them, of course, is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by, I forget her name, honestly, Taylor? No, that's not her name. I wanna say Jessica, but that's the main character's name. Hated hated this book. I was so excited for it. I was excited for it for like a good six months and it was a f it was a shit show. It was it was not good. I didn't like it. I didn't fuck with it. And then of course my other disappointment was humanistic ritual sacrifice. I was so excited for this book too. I bought the fucking hardcover but it was just like a waste. It was unsatisfying and then the author used this like weird spoiler plot twisty tropey thing with their trans character and it was like it just gave me the ick 
and I wasn't I wasn't into it I didn't like it also too much mention of shit and blood like if I wanted to hear about shit and blood I go check out fucking Chandler what the fuck is his name oh my god what's that guy's name I have like six curses pending for this motherfucker and I can't remember Chandler I want to say Morrison that's not it you know who I'm talking about anyway that guy if I wanted shit and blood, I'd go to that guy, okay? But I don't I don't want shit and blood most of the time. So yeah, it wasn't, it did, I didn't like it, it wasn't for me. Uh, next, now it's number six is biggest surprise. This is fun. So of course, of course, if you've been paying attention, the biggest surprise <laughs> was Ice Planet Barbarians by Ruby Dixon. I don't even know what possessed me to pick up the book. Uh, like buy it much less actually read it but I did and oh my god it was so fucking good before reading it I was like oh my god ha 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 like big dick aliens <laughs> that's funny it's like so funny like I bet it's gonna be just trashy and gross or whatever and then literally and then literally a bitch read it and was like oh <laughs> can I get abducted by an alien like, can that happen to me? Because, like, all I want is to be babied by, like, a six-foot fucking man with a tail and horns. Loved, loved Ice Planet Barbarians. I tried to read the second book. Couldn't get into it. There was too much sex in the beginning. And I think what I liked about the first book was that there was, like, this, like, big sort of long wait the author allowed uh tension to build which i think helped a lot for me because i like a good slow burn but the second book it was just like instantly like we're gonna masturbate together and it was like okay <laughs> it's been literally six pages chill the other biggest surprise of course was ninth house by lee bordugo when olivia recommended me that book in that video i will link it up and down below if you haven't seen it i almost shit my pants i was so fucking scared because i had the idea in my little bird fucking brain i was like i don't want to like i literally don't want to because i'm not gonna like it i'm just gonna sit here this whole time and just be miserable about everything i should trust olivia just like with everything you know what i mean like i should just i should just get with the program it was a fucking smash hit we loved it and then number seven is favorite new author hello editing jordan here so the audio turned out real fucked up in this clip so i'm just gonna put a little voice over here my answer basically was sarah j moss because if sarah j moss released a new book bitch you can guarantee that i would be there with money in hand ready to buy that shit as much as i don't like the idea of my new favorite author being sarah j moss i can't help but feel like i have to put her here because i have read a lot of her work so far this year anyway so that's my answer and I'm sticking to it. Okay, bye. Question eight is newest fictional crush. And it's not what you think. It's not what you think, okay? It isn't Hunt. It's not Resand. It's not Luke from Addie, Addie LaRue. It's none of those bitches. They don't, they don't make the cut for Jordan Line. Jordan Line has very strict and heavy expectations. And my choice is Alex from All the Feels. Listen, a book about a tall, thin man falling in love with a fat bitch <laughs> not only that but he's like rich like don't even like get me started and then olivia dade was like it's not enough here have a hot tub seat and it so for legal reasons i've chosen alex question number nine is favorite new character I have two choices for this. Number one, Abatha from Slewfoot. Abatha does not, does not fuck with misogyny. If she sees you being misogynistic, she's gonna destroy you. For that reason, we stand. And then of course, Alex from Ninth House. She's a loyal friend. She says whatever the fuck she wants to say. She doesn't give a fuck. And she's gay. <laughs> she's a homosexual, so we love. Number 10 is a book that made you cry. There have been a few books <laughs> and by a few I mean like maybe like a dozen. I have two but keep in mind that there are many because I am a cancer and I am very sentimental. I chose number one The Maid by Nina Prose. Listen there's a certain part of the book closer towards the end if you've read the book you know where something is revealed and it is one of the most heart-wrenching. Sir 
I'm having a touching moment. It's one of the most heart-wrenching moments I've ever read in a book and it was like 4 a.m. and I was like, well, what other time am I gonna have to sob? That's what happened. Check the tapes. And the second book was Cat Diary by Junji Ito. The whole book, and I'll get to it, hilarious. So much fun. And then the last bit, Junji shows up and is like, by the way, sadness. I cried because I had spent like a half an hour, an hour falling in love. And then Junji was just like, ripped it away. I cried. I cried quite a bit, quite a bit. Anyway, and then number 11 is happiest book or a book that made you happy. This is also Cat Diary by Junji Ito. Again, hilarious. And I'm saying this with my entire chest. If you have not checked out Cat Diary, if you have not read it, read it today, to, like right now. After you finish this video, go check out your library, see if they have it. Get it on like an ebook, buy it secondhand, like get Cat Diary, read Cat Diary because it's so fucking funny and I'm not even joking. It will add joy to your fucking life. I'm not joking read Cat Diary. It's so fucking good. It's so good. And nobody talks about it, but it's so good. The number 12 is most beautiful book you've bought so far this year. And I have three choices. <laughs> number one, I think I'm going to choose is Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. Simply alone for the cover, for the design of the book, but then also in my edition, they have these illustrations that are just stunning. It's gorgeous. I haven't read this. I should probably read it, but I haven't read it. But I, I love, I love the way that the book looks. The only complaint I have is that I wish it had something on the actual naked hardcover because it feels kind of empty. And then I bought these books like a few days ago and I bought them somewhat for their covers. So I thought I would mention it. And that is The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea by Axie O. Just look at that cover and tell me you're not literally just gagging. Whoever designed this book should get a raise. They deserve it. They're doing hard work and they're doing good work. Literally give them more money. Give them all of the money, to be honest. This book, which I just think is really, really fucking cute, they nailed, nailed it, okay? And that is A Spoonful of Murder by J.M. Hall. Like, just tell me that you don't look at this book and think, yeah. I want that for like, for like a summer night where I can just cozy up with some tea and some like cookies and just devour. Not only that, but like the little blurb says milk, two sugars and one dead body. <laughs> the cup has a cat on it. It's so cute. And then the back, the back says quite simply, being involved in a murder was never something they set out to do. The audio was fucked up at this part too, so the last question is, what books do you want to read before the year ends? And these are my choices. Cherish Vera by Bethany C. Morrow. Echo by Thomas O. Hulfelt. Sundial by Katrina Ward. Summer Suns by Lee Mandelo. Bloodline by Jess Lowry. And Pearl by Josh Mallerman. My friends, my family my familia. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books, what your favorite book of the year was so far. Uh, let me know what your like biggest like shit book is because I do love talking shit. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. This has been fun. This has been really great. It's been nice to spend time with you. Let me know what you think of the background and everything. I think it's literally stunning. I think I literally fit so well in it. I'm like, yes, I go to, I go to this school. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just a university student in her room. Mm, I am technically. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Oh, also, don't forget to hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit. We talk about creepy shit. We talk about a spoonful of murder and shit. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.